Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. This is KRWG TV, radio, online, news that matters. Now, across the Mosia Valley and the borderland, the stories that shape our community. From the KRWG Broadcast Center at New Mexico State University, this is Newsmakers. Up front this week, the national movement to enact new gun legislation following the murders of 17 people at a school in Parkland, Florida. The students at that school have accomplished what no other group has been able to achieve, a national dialogue and even new Florida laws to deal with the problem there. But opponents to new federal legislation continue their push as well. Later in the program, we'll revisit a protest at Las Cruces High School. But first, Michael Hernandez takes us to New Mexico State University for several events designed to shed light on gun violence. NMSU Police Chief Stephen Lopez hosted a forum with criminal justice students to review the history of gun legislation in the United States and address firearm safety concerns. Lopez, an NRA member himself, says gun control is not a black and white issue. It's not just people are on one side of the issue or the other. Most people are in favor of felons not having firearms. Um, however, somewhere in that spectrum, that's where people start falling off and it's important for people to be able to identify where they are and look at how they can find common ground with people. One student in search of common ground is criminal justice senior Chad Fabian, who plans on going into law enforcement after graduation. Following the mass shooting at a high school in Parkland, Florida, President Trump directed the Department of Justice to develop regulations to ban bump stocks, an accessory used by the Las Vegas gunman to kill 58 people in the largest mass shooting in American history. Fabian says restrictions are not the answer. That's simply not a solution. The man who's not going to kill someone with a bolt-action rifle is not going to kill someone with a machine gun with a suppressor on it. That's items don't cause evil thoughts. We need to control who has firearms, not what anyone can get. Major retailers, including Walmart and Dick's Sporting Goods, have stopped selling guns to anyone under 21 years old. Fabian says age restrictions should be enforced equally across the board. Science tends to back up the idea that we are not fully mature until about age 25. However, in order to do that, we need to be consistent. We can't have inconsistent laws. If someone's not mature enough to own a firearm, then they're not mature enough to vote and they're not mature enough to die overseas for the country. That's a simple reality. According to 2016 data from the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, the United States ranks 31st in the world in gun violence, with 3.85 deaths per 100,000 people. But compared to other developed nations, the U.S. is a stark outlier, with a gun violence rate eight times higher than Canada, 32 times higher than Germany, and 55 times higher than the United Kingdom. In New Mexico, about 18 people per 100,000 die from firearms, according to 2016 data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. That's the eighth highest rate in the country. The New Mexico Injury Prevention Coalition hosted a conference to approach gun violence prevention from a public health perspective. Among the speakers was State Senator Bill Souls, who says guns are a public health crisis. I'm a gun owner, but we need to have reasonable gun control. Uh, in the United States, it is way above every other country, and there's no reason for that. And lots of the violence and deaths we see from guns are absolutely preventable. And Responsible gun control measures are a way of doing that. The Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence recently released its annual gun law scorecard, which ranks all 50 states on the strength of their gun laws. New Mexico received an F grade and was ranked among the 10 worst states for gun safety. New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence co-president Miranda Viscoli says to keep guns out of young hands, child access prevention laws need to be passed in every single state. 
And what that means is that if you're a gun owner and your gun gets in the hands of a, of a child and they hurt themselves or somebody else, you're held accountable. I can promise you that I'll get gun owners start locking up their guns. Representatives from the Las Cruces Public Schools Student Advisory Council recently made their voices heard in Santa Fe to advocate for Senate Memorial 8, which requests education officials to study and evaluate potential solutions to decrease the rate of suicide by firearms and gun violence in schools. More than half of those who died by suicide from 2012 to 2016 used a firearm, according to the New Mexico Department of Health. Soul says the way to decrease instances of gun violence going forward is through legislation. Absolutely, the changes have to do with legislation, and legislation has to do with voting. Uh, there's a major election coming up this November, and we've seen out of Florida and the amazing students there. We've got students locally. Students are going to force us to change our laws because they are sick and tired of what's been going on, and it will change things, and it's going to change through young people voting because they do not want this to continue in their society. There's growing support for gun control measures. A Quinnipiac University poll finds two-thirds of Americans support a ban on assault weapons and 83 percent support a waiting period for all gun purchases. For KRWG, I'm Michael Hernandez. In Focus Today, International Education. I'm so pleased to welcome Rod McSherry. He is the Associate Provost for International and Border Programs at New Mexico State University. Rod, it is great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. You get a chance to uh, get out into the community uh, coming up. April 14th, I know that uh, you're going to be having an international festival. This is probably uh, the biggest chance for you and your staff to, and students as well, international right. students, to be out there and meeting folks uh, in, in the community. It is, uh, and so it's, it is something, it's nothing really new, it's something we've been doing since the 70s. What's new about it is this is the first year we'll be doing it on the plaza downtown. Uh, and the effort is to really get us off campus and out into the community, because that's, that's really a treasure we have here on campus that we'd like to share more with the community. So like I said, in on April 14th, we will be having a, an event on the plaza, and it's a Saturday, and so the, the farmer's market will be taking place right next door on Main Street, and we'll be lining the plaza with uh, representatives from our 74 different uh, countries. Not all of them will be there. Uh, we'll have probably uh, 10 or 12 different countries represented, and so it's a, a chance to, to show off a little bit. And tell us uh, uh, the, about the event. So people come down to the uh, downtown mall and they get to meet uh, many of the international mm -hmm. students and hear about the programs at New Mexico State University. Uh, some of the things they'll be able to learn and mm -hmm. do there. Uh, I think probably the, the more spectacular thing will be watching and seeing and, and smelling and hopefully tasting some of the, the things that happen. There'll be representatives, like I said, from uh, from about uh, 10 different countries, you'll, you'll have uh, uh, folks from China who will be doing demonstrations of some of their cultural dances, some of the Sri Lankan uh, performances. Uh, you'll see native costumes from the Middle East. Um, uh, if, if we're lucky, we'll get to sample a few of their international tr delights and some of their foods and drinks. And here, lots of foreign languages besides Spanish being spoken. So it should be a great opportunity to, to hear and sense all the little bit of our international world from campus. That is really fantastic. So, and it seems like there are more opportunities for people to learn about um, all of the exciting things that are happening at New Mexico State with international education. Right. I had a chance to go to an event uh, seeing some of our uh, students uh, from uh, China mm -hmm. who were here on campus right. at an event with the Confucius <coughs> Institute on campus. Some people may not know who are watching this that we have a Confucius Institute. I didn't know until you just said we have students from 74 countries. Right, right. We do. That's and amazing. Um, Is and that a record? Do you uh, know? I don't know if it's the highest number, but uh, a couple years ago we, we were saying 70, 71, so I like to think that we're continuing to grow the number of countries represented yeah. here. 
So we have about 900 students uh, from overseas with us right now, which represents about 7% of our Las Cruces student body. So you'll, you'll how find- is, How is that in terms of uh, comparison to a, a university like ours, a state university like this, to have, to have that many students? Is that, pretty, is that pretty normal? Is that an average 7% mm. of the, of the uh, students? I would say here in, in the area, um, and the area being kind of up and down the, the Rio Grande Valley. So if you look at us compared to, to our, our northern neighbor and our southern neighbor, we're, we're right in there with the same, same number. Um, but uh, other land grant universities, we're probably doing better than most. Mm. Um, so it's just a question of, of how, you, how you, you stack us up. But you know, the, the 900 number I is pretty good. We would like to see it stronger. Uh, and to do that, I think uh, part of our, our message is, uh, is to get the word out, uh, what people can find when they come to school here, because you know, we're, we're a uniquely southwestern border American experience, which is, is different. And up and, and down the border, I don't think you'll find anybody like us, and uh, you know, offering the combination of things we have as far I as being a research institution in this cultural setting uh, on a traditional international highway that went from Mexico City to Santa Fe for the last 500 years, so. Yeah, I've been so impressed uh, since I've been here too with the outreach uh, on campus with students to encourage them to go to other countries, mm -hmm. to explore other countries. Uh, I think this is such a, an incredibly <coughs> important part of your education. Mm -hmm. If you have the opportunity to travel to another country, I didn't have that opportunity when I was an undergrad, but as a professional, I've had the opportunity right. to go to Germany for a few weeks. We have an exchange program, and we actually host German journalists here which is an incredible experience mm -hmm. for our students, for students in our high schools to meet German journalists. I want to get your sense about how international students and the international experience uh, enriches our campus and community, mm -hmm. and then also your take on what I just said, right. traveling overseas, going elsewhere. Well, I think to, you know, the, the part about giving people an opportunity to go international, uh, you can go international if you move and get on a plane and go someplace, but we also are recognizing the fact that you can stay home and have an international experience. So we're looking at, at all of the ways to open our, our view to the wider world. Uh, and one of the things, the obvious one is to, to put people on planes and, and send them internationally on study abroad or these faculty-led programs that if, if they only have a, a small amount of time, so if they can't do an entire semester or a year abroad, they could go for a couple weeks. So there's, there's different opportunities for the student who was interested in, in kind of uh, probing the international waters. And so um, uh, I agree with that. That's, that's something we're trying to do both on the academic side as well as a, a non-academic. So if it's not a, a, a four credit class and it's something that is of interest to the, the student, there's a way for them to get support from us to go participate in conferences or to go do volunteering in a, in a foreign country. They can really pursue their particular interest without having to be in a, in a kind of a pre-established uh, course or uh, very, something very structured. So we have something from the very structured semester abroad where you're taking credit classes or we can go all the way to students and faculty and staff finding something that fits their particular interest that we can help them with. Uh, and that's something that we're, we're very uh, excited about because there is an area we have an opportunity for growth because at New Mexico State, we are probably uh, in a place where we can grow those numbers a lot and, and catch up with some of our, our neighbor institutions. Uh, and part of that is, uh, is we're, we're international already. I think we have people who are uh, within an hour, a 30 minute drive from another country and, and they have an international lifestyle already. So it's, it, it's hard to, to, it's challenging to stimulate that. I want to go see something different among our people, but, but that's coming and it's doing very well. And our faculty, we have a very rich, diverse faculty here that is also responsible for helping cultivate that idea. And so I think, I think you'll see a lot of excitement and growth and, and getting overseas. Um, okay. You mentioned uh, 900 uh, international students mm -hmm. at the Las Cruces campus. Uh, as you know, some institutions have seen uh, international student applications decline. Mm -hmm. What is the situation like here? 
across um, New Mexico, and it's interesting, they, uh, inter the national reports look at statewide numbers, and, and the numbers in New Mexico for uh, all of our institutions, uh, if you take all foreign applications and overseas applications, they have gone down. But the interesting thing with us is for the third consecutive year, the applications from Mexico have increased. Mm. So we're seeing a, a steady stepwise increase in applications from Mexico to New Mexico State. Which is different which is, from Which is going against states. the trend. Yes. Going against the trend. Yes. You, you mentioned uh, Mexico. Where does Me Mexico fall uh, in the top five or so? They uh, are in the top five. Okay. And you would think that for a, an institution that's 45 to 60 <laughs> right minutes the border, across. They'd be number one, that but we would not, be number right. one, but it's not. So uh, in the top five, you find uh, Kuwait, uh, India, China, Saudi Arabia, and Mexico. Um, we have a strong showing from other countries as well. In Nepal, for example, a very, a very uh, ambitious group that is here with us. So, but Mexico is growing. So the applications are increasing. And I would attribute that uh, we have been doing, we're in our second year of our Descubre program, and Descubre is the, the Spanish word for discovery, and so that, uh, it's all about discovery, even in, in Espanol, so even in Spanish. Uh, so doing outreach, really, and, and being active. So we have, we're doing outreach and promotion of the idea and, and what is NMSU, and to, to make it even more attractive, we have a, a special tuition rate for Mexican nationals, which other universities offer. But it's the combination, it's not just about the price, but it's about the, the total experience for the, the Mexican student and family that's looking for an American education, but close to home. Your, your office has done something so wonderful. I, I've had a chance to go to a couple of these uh, events on campus where you have <coughs> students uh, from other countries uh, do a presentation about their mm -hmm. uh, country and you have coffee and cookies and, and get to spend an hour with them and they talk about what life is like in their country and you really learn a lot about right. them and their country. That's outreach that you do as well on campus, which is fabulous. Right, we do. And so that's, we're, when we talk about internal and external diplomacy, if you will, and getting the message across campus is exciting and it's a great opportunity because in our day-to-day -day lives, we spend a lot of time and get in narrower and narrower in our focus and research and studies. And so every now and again, it's refreshing to take a break and mix up the colleges and have someone who is a, uh, a student in engineering from the Middle East talk to people who maybe have never even thought about that before. So we, inside the campus and from college to college, we're, my office has that ability to move around and, and help bring people out and, and give them a platform to talk about uh, their national pride. Yeah, so it's really it's great. Very exciting. Tell me about your journey into this field. Mm. Well, um, when I, it wasn't until I left here until I found out how international we are here. And um, I, I grew up here in the borderlands, uh, about like 30 minutes as well from the, the Mexican border. And, and my story is a little bit of, a, of an internationalized story as well. I'm, my mother's a first generation American from Italian immigrant parents, uh, farmers, who, by the way, used to come down to what was New Mexico A&M back at the time to, mm. to learn about agriculture in the Chihuahuan Desert, because coming from Italy, they didn't know much about desert agriculture. So even back in the, um, the 20s and 30s, my family was, was coming down to New Mexico A&M and New Mexico State. So. Uh, I did a, uh, my undergraduate time, I did a, an international work study abroad, which then completely changed the course of my studies and took me from a, a very science directed course of study to something more international focused, uh, on to a, an international master's degree, interdisciplinary, and wound up in the, the foreign service. So I spent 28 years in the, in the uh, diplomatic service, wow. came back to New Mexico, which I always knew that I would and um, tried to find a way to, to use my New Mexico roots, my international networks for the benefit of a, a university that gave me the start for this uh, a few years ago. So that's fantastic. happy to be back. So what are your hopes for NMSU's international and border programs? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, part of it's fundamental is, is continuing to spread that word around campus and around the community. We have some fabulous uh, resources that we could use we have a Center for Latin American and Border Studies, which I think for a border institute like ours really should be that premier 
platform for where people can come talk about, learn about, exchange information about research, uh, culture, language, uh, what's going on in, in Latin America and the border today. So that's, that's an area we're, we're developing as well. Uh, growing our numbers of, of international students uh, and not only just to bring in more numbers, but to bring in students who are participating in the in campus life, community life, and also opportunity for our, our students, New Mexico students and NMSU scholars and, and professors and researchers to get out and get overseas and uh, give them an opportunity to exchange and collaborate, take a, a, a chance to, to see what's what is out there that they could bring home for the benefit of both sides. Well, you do very important work, and I am so grateful that you agreed to come and talk a little bit about this mm. and about your background. And folks, hopefully, will get a chance to get out and, Thank you. and meet you and, and some of your staff and students on April 14th. Look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Rod McSherry is Associate Prof Provost for International and Border Programs at New Mexico State University. Thanks for joining us in Focus. Earlier in the program, we took you to New Mexico State University, where several events were held to shed light on gun violence. Last month, students across the country walked out of classes to call for new gun legislation. Michael Hernandez attended one of those events at Las Cruces High School. To mark the one-month anniversary of the school shooting in Parkland, Florida that killed 17 people, students nationwide walked out of their classrooms to remember the victims and call for an end to gun violence. At Las Cruces High School, students held a moment of silence for 17 minutes, one minute to honor each of the victims. Senior Angelica Avalos says seeing hundreds of her classmates show up to support the movement means the world to her and shows her she isn't alone. There's only a few people around the school who have spoken up about anything like this and for there to be an event to see even more people than I had anticipated come out today meant the world to me because it means people care. Even if it's not here, even if it's in Florida, people still care. Avalos says she has a personal connection to gun violence. She says her distant cousin was one of the two students killed in the Aztec high school shootings last December. Although I didn't know her well, that was still my blood spilled that day. And that was very hard for me personally. It changed my whole outlook on gun violence, on everything. It changed how I felt about coming to school every morning. Not everyone held signs with messages like no more and enough. A group of students carried signs supporting the Second Amendment. Junior and NRA member Denny Ashley says banning guns won't help make schools safer. They're going to try to push their uh, beliefs that the guns should be banned, which is a perfectly fine belief. That's their belief and we respect that. But we also want to make sure that our beliefs is respected as well and the fact that we're not going to sacrifice the Second Amendment because they think it'll make school safer. It won't make school safer to get rid of guns. Avalo says she understands the issue goes deeper than guns and supports stronger background checks and spreading awareness for mental illness. She also supports her classmates' right to counter-protest. They have the exact same rights we do and they have the right to speak their mind. I'm not saying that we should go and take guns away. I don't believe that. I just believe that they should be harder to get. I believe they have their opinions and we have ours, and even if they don't exactly line up, I feel we could come to an agreement somewhere in the center. Leaders of the Las Cruces Student Advisory Council, a group of students from area high schools who give input to the city's Board of Education, did not support the walkout, but members of the school board did attend to show their support. Board member Maria Flores says she feels very strongly about students speaking out for what they believe. I was born in East L.A. and there were walkouts when I was a little girl and I felt that that impacted my life because I realized that we all have a voice. So whether you're pro or against, it's a voice and everybody needs to be heard. So that's what I value. Avalos says she believes having students nationwide participate in the walkouts sends a message to legislators in Washington, D.C. that students have a voice and are making themselves heard. I believe that this shows them, um, like, we're here. We're not adults yet and some of us are going to be able to vote soon, but 
we're in high school, we're the students being affected, and we're here to say something about it. And we're not going to stand down until changes are made. Those changes are starting to happen. The Florida legislature recently passed restrictions that include raising the minimum age to purchase firearms to 21 years old. For KRWG, I'm Michael Hernandez. That's our time for now. Join us this week on KRWG Radio every weekday. It's morning edition 5 to 9, fresh air at 11, followed by here and now, noon to 2, and all things considered, 4 to 7. KRWG News is always online at krwg.org, and we'd love to hear from you. Email us with your story ideas and video submissions. The address is feedback at nmsu.edu. For all of us at KRWG News, I'm Fred Martino. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Newsmakers.